I really like the point about uh, the emotional connection, right? And I think social media is the most powerful way of establishing a social connection, right? It's how you get to humanize yourself. It's how you get to project your values out there into the landscape for your clients and your audience to react to and fall in love with, right? <laughs> Chris, you're out of the main office in yes, sir. Phoenix. Nice, nice. Yep, yeah, I'm here in downtown Phoenix. So if you guys want to see that, I'm here at the main mm. office. Nice. That's you're a view from level, the dude. south. I, I always thought you guys were like in a in a in a that, high rise. That's courageous we to show out the window. You never know what's going to be out there. Right. Mm -hmm. We were. Okay. This is our new uh, office space. Everyone's at lunch right now, besides myself. Um, so just to kind of show you the warehouse space. Nice. Um, we bought an old warehouse. It used to be a, um, I believe a tractor and machinery sort of manufacturing, ma manufacturing building. And Ooh. they would display them in here. So they have huge rollers where they would display them also. And then that's how they sort of sold them to farmers and things around here. Um, so it was a very that's known awesome. building. Yeah. That's Chris, awesome. did they, did they leave an old tractor in there by any chance? Like, did you guys build around it or anything? That would have been cool. They did leave some of the old architecture in here and the bay doors and stuff to kind of keep the building the same way. But yeah, a nice tractor in here would be fun. That's cool. I like that. Maybe we can still hanging in the rafters. So if we don't want to go to the auto party, we're set. Right. Chris would be like, I'll cut the grass today. <laughs> That's so hey, funny. I'll run an articulated lift and I'll drive it around in here just to have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. But let, let's get started, everyone. We've got a packed house. We've got our friend Adam Frank. If you don't know him, he, he's the guy that always talks about putting things together on the back end of Chime, making them work, whether it's AI, a website, anything. He's going to be chiming in today. And we've got CRM coach Chris Gonzalez, digital marketing manager with Chime, Brady Mosk, onboarding specialist with Chime, Michael Beatty, account manager with Chime. And in the background, you can't see them, but we've got Kendra and Jacob. They're holding on the fort. Guys, really quick, I'm going to show what we're going to talk about so people at least have an understanding of where we're heading. And let me see if my screen, perfect. These are the four things we're going to be sharing. AI assistant, tailoring your smart plans to different types of audiences, leveraging social media, and dominating your market by brand awareness. You guys ready to go? Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, for letting us know where you're from. Now let us know how the weather is. And I know if you're in the New York area, you're going to complain about the bad air. So go ahead. Here we go. Uh, who are we going to go to first, Chris? Uh, so first it is, I believe Adam Frank is first on the list with AI assistant, setting yourself up for success. So if you want to take it from here, Adam, I think I'm last on the list there on that agenda. So you bet I can start things off. Uh, thanks for having me. Of course. Um, love talking about chime, love talking about this kind of stuff. Um, the AI assistant is chimes automated chat bot. And one of the questions I get asked a lot, besides how to set this thing up, what's the best practices, how do I really use this thing, is what sets this chatbot apart from everything else on the market, right? Um, Chime has had this chatbot live for a little over three years, about three and a half years now. And it is the only uh, real estate chatbot that uses Google machine learning technology. Um, all the other bots are scripted bots where the, the logic is, the lead says something relevant, like one of the easiest things is, you know, something about needing financing, needing to talk to a lender, right? So the, the logic in the scripted chatbots will take those key words and say, oh, we need to talk about next steps for a lender. That makes sense. So it will send, say, template number four of, of the 10 options it has of, of relevance to that. How it's different with the Chime AI Assistant is the Google machine learning technology helps to analyze the data from actual real conversations that it has with live leads and then goes the takes the logic a step further to say okay well 
template number four might be the most relevant, but template number seven actually continued the conversation two more steps. So we're gonna bank on that data point and we're gonna send number seven, which is less relevant, but more effective in hopes that our data supports, it's gonna continue the conversation. That's what the intent of chatbots is. It's the word chat, right? We're gonna have a conversation. So it's it's geared more towards using relevant real conversations as data points to pick the best wording to use to continue the conversation based on the history of the data. That is huge. And Shime is the only real estate chatbot that does that versus everybody else. So that's how it works on the, on the kind of high level scale. Um, what I like using the AI assistant for and how I use it is basically this is a $39 a month starting um, cost to have a 24 seven ISA. So ISAs typically help you from curiosity to con uh, consultation as I call it. So when a lead registers all the way through the nurturing process until you set a um, uh, lead appointment to have a consultation with that lead. That's how I utilize the AI assistant in my business. And there are a lot of different ways that you can do this in Chime. Um, some of the settings, and I'll show you in a minute here, some of the settings, like you can pick the lead type. So if you like in my market, I don't deal with renters on the MLS. The only, the only leases or, or rentals on the MLS are typically going to be commercial leases. I don't touch that stuff. So I turn the bot off for rental inquiries. If a rental inquiry comes in from a, like a, a listing for sale, the AI assistant will just politely end the conversation and, and deal with them that way. But I'm de basically dealing with buyers and sellers. So I want them to qualify those leads. I want them to nurture leads, set up the buyer on property alerts if needed, set appointments when they have time and um, you know go into different settings here. So let me share my screen. Oh, uh, if you can turn on my screen sharing for me, please. I can kick it on. While, um, while Jake is turning on your screen share there, there's a great question. Uh, and I want to answer it right now because some other people may be thinking about it. And Chris, you can chime in too on this. Has anyone has anyone been real, real successful with a chat bot? I have not. A thousand plus leads converting less than 1% and uh, disappointed way more leads than that. Thoughts? Chris, Here's my answer to you. We've been running online leads since 2007 and both Facebook lead ads, all, all, everything, PPC. And we've had a chat bot on for years since it was able to be thrown on. And we've noticed that it's similar here. So not a lot of people on our side, on our sites, engage with the chatbot the way that we use the ai is how adam is going to show you it's really used for nurturing and incoming leads that are coming through that's where you're going to see the biggest success and as far as converting less than one percent nationally for most teams we're looking at about if you're going a little over one percent conversion for google ppc facebook lead ads you're doing pretty well that's those are realistic numbers so just know that and adam back to you buddy unless chris you've got something to add gonzalez i mean i'll add this what site do you guys go on that doesn't have an automated ai chatbot i just ask you guys as public think about it and this is what it's really meant to be right scalability if i myself am running my business how many people can i personally reach daily i have a limit so that's what the AI is there for. It's your backup. It is your backup to your business so that the things that you can't handle, it handles the busy work for you. And I have personally seen it book appointments and have showing set up at 7 a.m. in the morning with leads where the agent doesn't even know it happened yet because I do team training. So I see it convert all the time, but don't use it as your front line all the time. Maybe that's Adam's plan because I know Adam does that, right? uses it as his frontline systems, but he has that business model. For you guys out there where you're in a small niche market, you be the owner of your environment and you use it as overflow for yourself. As you're scaling your business up, you're not gonna be able to handle 5,000 leads by yourself. Your AI is there to back you up. And that, that, that's it for my point. Everyone is naturally going into AI. We already are on websites that use it. Use it to your advantage to scale your business because 
And Adam will tell you this too. We make mistakes. We do. We say the wrong thing all the time. I make mistakes. Your AI is going to make mistakes, but Google machine learning, like Adam says, it'll intuitively soften itself up. I saw that this morning where it said, I don't want to bug you. So please reach out when you're ready. And I'd love to answer some questions. I saw the AI say that this morning. So, um, but yeah, go ahead, Adam. I don't want to hijack. And to, um, to kind of, you know, um, leverage off of what Chris was saying. So th these are the AI settings in the Chime system. And what Chime has created, and this is not only, uh, like this is only one segment of the system where they do this. They do this in a lot of other areas in the system. But Chime builds in features and options to give you as much versatility as possible with how you want to run your business. So for example, mine, I plan off the Adam and Eve things. So I named mine Eve. Um, it will text from its own Chime number, set completely separate. And I have it, I want to engage um, unregistered leads on the website. So on the website here, it's going to be in the bottom right corner is going to be this little talk, uh, talk box that pops up when somebody's not registered. And then it'll try to have a conversation. You can have quick responses to so just, you know, click I'm interested in selling and the bot will take that path down there. Um, the hours are set. And this is the really nice, uh, one of the really nice things. I have it set during the working hours, eight and eight. I don't want to bug people during off times. Um, and then I have it set to qualify the incoming leads that register during the inactive hours when it's active again. So let's say somebody registers at like 10 p.m they're not gonna get a text message from my bot until eight in the morning the next morning. So just respecting people's quiet time. Um, I let it run all days. You can specify lead sources. So if you just want this to run with your, um, your PPC leads, your Facebook leads, your open house leads, you can do that. You can, you can pick from all the different lead sources that are in your system and have it target what you want it to target. If you just want the Chime paid lead one, then just run it for that you know, that lead source, it's totally fine. Um, you can, again, pick the leads, the lead type. You can segment the database into certain pipelines. So pipelines in Chime are meant to be used as the point in the transaction process from curiosity to close and then beyond as a past client. The settings here allow you to pinpoint the different pipelines which you want the bot to engage and nurture and follow up with the leads. The way I like to use mine is the incoming leads get nurtured and, and qualified by the bot. Once that process is done, which typically is around five uh, five calendar days, the bot is tag or the, the the bot tags the lead with something you know needs financing, just looking whatever it is, not interested, or no response. I have smart plan automations that will take that that tag and automatically sort into pipelines. So I have an idea about what their timeline is because I'm going to have a different conversation with somebody that's ready to rock and roll within the next 30, 60, 90 days rather than somebody that's not interested or doesn't respond, right? It's a whole different conversation point. So that's how I segment my database. Mm -hmm. The versatility with these pipelines is you can set up your database. And like, if you don't like the timing, I, you know, you can see here, hot, warm, cold, nurtured, things like that. If you don't want to set your system up like that, you don't have to, and you can still use the setting of the pipeline in the in the AI assistant settings to exactly match how you run your business for, for lead qualification and nurturing. And then the available conversation options, as far as qualifying your lead, you know, different scheduling, showing, providing listings, nurture, I can turn these on or off just with a simple click to say, you know what, if they open a property alert but haven't clicked, maybe I don't want them to follow up with. It's that simple to change the setting. So, and then if you have the, um, the advanced um, or the, the premium, which I do, you have the ability to connect your Facebook business page, um, emphasis on business page, Messenger, with an AI assistant. So if somebody sends a message, and please don't do that on my on my system, <laughs> it burns up my 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 uh, usage. But if you go to my, if somebody were to go to my business page and send me a message on my business page, the AI assistant will kick on and communicate through the Facebook Messenger to qualify the lead. And when that process is done, it will import all their database or all their information into my database in Chime as a new lead. Um, I get a lot of the versatility here. So like if you only, let's say we want to change this 
you want the AI assistant to basically be your off hours. So if you want to rely on your agent, let's say you, you have a small team where during the working hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., you want to have the, the real live human being deal with them. But off hours, when people are sleeping and doing family things from, say, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., you want the bot to work those. Just simply change those active hours here from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and change them over from to 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And now you basically have a third shift automated bot running your running your follow-up when you're busy sleeping and doing other things. So the versatility that Chime has within this bot set, um, the, the bot settings here can be pretty, um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty customized. The other thing I get asked about a lot is like, do I treat this thing like an actual bot? Like in the, in the, the, the uh, website bot image here, I don't went to um, unsplash.com, which is a royalty free um, stock photo website. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. You just download them as is. So I found a professional looking woman that uh, has the brand colors, minor navy blue and white. So looks professional, matches brand colors, named her Eve. This is this is what it is. And again, on my website here, you can see this is how it's going to show up. What I do, you, I, I've seen people, they use their a little robot or a little cartoon image or something like that for the AI assistant. And, and again, the ability to customize the way that you do business within the Chime CRM system is really, really great. I prefer to treat her like an actual human being. I do refer to as her um, because in this role here, this is basically an ISA that I don't have to pay any benefits to and don't pay hourly. It's it's a monthly fee to, to Chime, right? I went a step further and I created a little roster profile on my about page. So this is the number that she texts from. This is an alias here so that if you email that, that address, it actually comes to me instead. And I wrote up a little uh, kind of candid uh, description, you know, digital assistant. So like, hey, this is not a human being. This is a bot kind of a thing. That's like my hidden disclaimer there, kind of in plain sight. You know, she never takes a break, never gets sick, dedicated all hours of the day and night assisting our agents with client care. Frontline sales technology, again, it's a bot. Works tirelessly to find out your needs, buying, selling, investing in real estate today, if you never need to, like, and so on. So, like, I'm basically giving her a little profile to further explain when people are on my website, who the heck is Eve? Well, this is who Eve is. Um, and one of, the, um, one of the final things that I really enjoy doing is the ability and the smart plans to re-engage with certain lead types and certain conditions. So, mm -hmm. in this case here... What I'm going to do, and if people are currently have Chime and they're using the AI assistant, the big point here to, in order to have this um, available from the drop down here in the action step is it needs mm -hmm. to be the lead type of the combination buyer and seller. If you have buyer and seller separately as two of them, it won't work. You have to select the, the combination buyer and seller, and then that will work in the drop down. So what I do here is if there's a buyer in the hot plant in the hot pipeline. Mm -hmm. I want I want to unmute if the bot is is muted already from whatever reason. I want the bot to basically wake up and start the conversation to schedule an appointment with the lead. Because in my mind, a hot lead is ready to rock and roll and take action in person, looking at homes and writing offers in the next 30 days. So if somebody enters that pipeline and is in that situation, that's the I want I want to have that appointment scheduled with the bot, with the um with the automation there. Um and then once once the bot or, uh, once the bot receives a response when this plan kicks on, it's going to automatically pause, and then a little tag responded to AI, and now I can step in to basically finish up the appointment. Is that what you recommend, Adam? You stepping in at some point because I've also seen the opposite where the the bot just keeps going and we miss the opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So going back to Chimes thought process in the real world, the versatility here can be customized to the way you want to conduct your process in your business. I like to step in after a certain point and take over so that there's that human touch. Like technology is not, in my opinion, technology is not meant to replace human interaction. It's meant to enha enhance the human inter interaction. So what I'm doing here is leveraging technology so that when I step in as a human, it's more meaningful. When 
the bot gets to a point of getting a response when the schedule is in the process of being of being set with the lead and the lead responds. Now, now we can jump in, right? Yeah. I've tried both methods, and that's what Chime also allows you to do as well. I can I can simply unmark this, and now when it responds, it's just going to keep on going and have a conversation. So I can have the smart plan set up like this, so that the bot just kind of does everything. Mm -hmm. And I can also have it set the other way, where well, maybe I want to step in once it gets a response, and all I want to do is just have the bot talk about hey when do you want to meet if they respond well maybe thursday or friday morning is good now i want to step in you know i i can make that decision and with the settings and the smart plan with the ai assistant here like i just showed you can easily do a split test and try one for you know a couple of weeks or a month or so and then try the other version and again whatever performs better in your system go ahead and do that it's changed it's changed a few times that, that i've used it as far as um, I think this, this this particular feature has been out in the smart plan, I believe, about eight to 12 months now, I think, right around a year. Um, nice. And I, 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 I go back and forth sometimes. Winter, people are not really um, willing to talk with a human because they're burnt out on holiday stuff with family. So they respond mm -hmm. to the technology that way. So right around mm -hmm. the end of October, I kick on this plan where I'm going to let the bot do all the work and I'm just going to confirm things in person in the warmer months like now mm -hmm. i want to be able to step in and take care of that because people are it's nice and warm up up here in wisconsin finally people are more social they're more um more willing to talk to a, a human being and the response is better when i step in versus letting the technology take care of everything dude uh well while you answered that thank you so much i also ran a quick poll and i'm going to share the results here with everyone are you currently using AI for incoming leads and your database? We had 67% said no. And 33% you know, said yes. Interesting, right? Just so yeah. we see where everyone's at. And that that doesn't that doesn't really surprise me too much. I think I think the the, the AI, especially the AI chatbot stuff, like everybody's so used to automation and, and drip campaigns and things like that now. Like we're just we're just getting cool with that. And then the AI chatbot stuff, people are still a little like, yeah, it's a little, a little edgy there, Tristan. I'm not sure about this. You know, they want, <laughs> and they want to, they want to kind of sit back and see how things go before they jump in. That's true. Chris, you had something to say, buddy. I do. I have two questions and I want to address them both at the same time, because I think it's a, a good here. So Denise and Chris both had, you know, where they said that I didn't like the conversion of the AI, right? Denise said that. And then Chris in here says, unlike a person, I can't train it. Um, so I, yes, it does learn fast, Chris. Uh, it's probably not uh, any slower than a real human, right? You hire somebody to be your assistant. You can't control their mannerisms, the way they speak, their sales knowledge. You hire the person based on their skills that you see topically, but you're never going to be able to make them look and sound and feel like you as a real person. It's the same with the AI. So to give you both advice and same with conversion metrics, it's like, what are you looking at as conversion? AI is meant to start conversations. It can go much deeper, but look at the conversion metric of conversations started because that's where it begins. After that, if you're afraid, you guys take over. You guys are all salespeople. I came from sales. We have the gift to gab, right? So take over. M make sure that your sales come in and you take over. And where do you guys start doing that? That screen, Adam, showed you where you can choose what it does. Scheduling appointments, sending listings, um, how aggressive, right? Take off the aggressive schedule appointment and start with just sending listing suggestions and just start with that because 99% of people that make it to any real estate site want to see listings. I'm in all of your platforms and the most popular landing page on all of your platforms is the listing detail page. People want to see uh -huh. listings. So yeah. start with that with the AI, start slowly and yes, take over. But you you can go and hire someone all you want. You can't train them to be you. The AI is the same way. Treat it as a backup for your business. Find where it fits in. It doesn't have to be the same. It's not cookie cutter for everyone. Just like Adam said, you know, the way he names his, you guys figure out how you want to name it. It's got a lot of flexibility, but I will tell you, it will book appointments for you and it will do a lot of conversations starting for you. And that's the key is start more conversations because that's the beginning of the conversion metric. It's not closing business. That's the end. 
The beginning is starting the conversation. After that, you have a lot mm. of steps in between to get to closing. So oh, and- I treat the, the first conversion metric I treat when I talk to people about lead gen or anything mm-hmm. is starting a conversation. Yep, exactly. Like $39 a month and it can sort out hand raisers from tire kickers. I'll pay 39 bucks every day for that kind of result. It's a, it's a no brainer. I agree, man. And, and for, for sales people, it's normal to think that we need to start at the end, which is let's just get to the closing, <laughs> but it takes, it takes a whole long time to get there. Michael, tell us about smart plans and how we can use them to get to the closing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Hey guys, Michael Beatty, I am in Chime's onboarding team. One of the first people you might run into when you arrive to Chime after you've talked with our sales team. Um, As everybody knows, you guys have already talked about it a bit here. The big draw to using the CRM in general is having kind of a central place of truth uh, where you can have everything about your leads. And then, you know, beyond that, it's having a central place where you can implement your processes. Uh, Those processes can be anything from manual follow-up, documentation, out to full automation using the AI, like what Adam was just talking about. And then we start getting into things like uh, Social Studio Pro and how it can automatically post uh, listings to your social media accounts, uh, automatic property alerts, which is old hat for most of you guys, and then Chime Smart Plan. Uh, Chime Smart Plans, I'm going to pull up my screen if it'll let me, perfect, Uh, this one, Uh, Chime Smart Plans, when you think about them, a lot of people, the first thing they think of when they hear Smart Plans is they think drip campaign, drip campaign, that's emails and texts, right, and that's definitely a big key feature to what you can do, but I think it's really important to understand what's all the different stuff a Smart Plan inside of Chime does, and then how do we go about organizing that? to get it to the right people. So I'm gonna show you quickly what the options are here. Adam touched on some of these. Uh, You know, you guys can see there's automatic email, automatic text. I'm gonna jump around a little bit here, but there's also stuff like postcards and letters. Those are automated Mm -hmm. uh, snail mail, direct mail that goes out to people for things like basically uh, farming operations. And then we've got a ton of other options in here. Uh, I skipped email and text when I showed you auto email and text, because when you see just email and text and also call inside of Chime Smart Plans, these are tasks. And these are tasks that get assigned to a specific person. The way those get assigned is just using this option here that says assign to. So if it's assigned to you as the primary agent there, you're gonna get that task. If you've got an assistant assigned under your role types or an ISA, same deal. It's gonna get assigned to those people. Uh, this part's really, really important to look at is there's another set of steps that are in here, like changing pipelines, changing groups, and changing tags. Adam talked about these as well. These are about helping you get your leads organized into the right pipeline stages. Some places you guys call them buckets. People call them, you know, just uh, stages in your sales cycle. But these are all really nice features you can use later after you start running filters or you start identifying, uh, you know, what's been going on. Nobody responded to that lead uh, that lead nurturing campaign that you had run for 180 days. You might want to move them to a pipeline called cold or something like that, or move them to one that's going to uh, trigger you trying to call them again for a couple of weeks. Uh, then we get over into AI assistant action, which is you know a really, really heavy, important thing here. You notice that when I mouse over it right now, it just says monitor the lead's behavior. I scroll back up and I choose buyer, come back down to it. I go to AI assistant action. This opens up a, another world of possibilities. It's going to let me do things like qualify the lead, schedule appointments, help lead with listing suggestions, and then schedule showings and monitor behavior. Monitor behavior is just looking for what they do on your website or whether or not they open something you sent them. These options like qualifying the lead, though, these are direct inquiries by your AI assistant saying, hey, uh, I noticed that you inquired about a house in... Um, I can't think of a neighbor, uh, San Antonio, right? Um, what were you looking for? And then it'll go down the path of that conversation. This is a really, really powerful thing to have built into a smart plan. And you can make that a single step smart plan, but it could also be three or four or five emails and texts. And then 
let's fire up the assistant. Uh, really, really cool tool you can use here. Um, what I want to go into a little bit about how to use this, though, is how we actually organize them, right? So we're looking at you know what they can do. All these cool functions. There's a couple I'm going to leave off because they're weird, like uh, reassignment group or uh, how to use Zaps from Zapier. Those are pretty advanced tools. When we talk about actually organizing them, though, we're going to talk about our people page inside of Chime. I'm going to move to that. This is a demo account. And in here, if I make this window a little wider for you, you can see all those pipeline stages we have in here. Chime's got a few mm -hmm. main ways of dividing up your uh, client base, right? You're going to have the ability to divide by first and foremost, lead type. We looked at that inside of the smart plan. You've got buyer, seller, renter, other, and then buyer and seller. And these will actually define what you're going to be able to send people, right? We're not gonna make available automatic buyer property alerts for somebody who you have labeled or captured as a seller. Why? Because that'd be a bad example or a bad, uh, a bad experience for them. Uh, once you've got them categorized into buyers and sellers, renters and other, then the main series of organizational tools are gonna be your pipeline stages. So in here, this one's a little bit modified. These are not all of the default settings, but you've got new leads, which is the default pre-created one, and then warm, nurturing, hot, closed. You see is under contract, bad leads, do not contact. Uh, admins, you guys are gonna be able to build these out much more complete. You can have 20 stages in here, or you can have four, depending on what you're looking to do. Really important to know that these are unique. You can only be in one pipeline stage at a time if you are a lead. You can't be under contract and also uh, hot. It just Our system doesn't allow for it, and that's mostly to help in terms of uh, these automations so you don't have two smart plans stepping on each other's toes. After we look at pipeline stages, which are you know these, then you get into what we call groups over here in China. These are everything that lives in here. These are basically really sophisticated tags that allow for some automated uh, follow-up periods. They're a little more front and center for you in the system. Uh, these are not like pipelines. You don't have to have uh, a lack of overlap. You can have somebody both be in need to contact past clients and a particular church group. Um, and then tags are just going to work like tags do everywhere else. So what do we do to use these, right? Um, the vast majority of our plans, they're using automatic email, automatic text, but it's really, really important for those automatic emails and automatic texts to do things based on the connections you've made or the data you've been able to glean from those customers. You've got to be able to segment your potential buyers and sellers based on their needs, their preferences, their stage in the process. What we're going to look at really, really quickly here is what it would look like to make use of an AI to capture more information. So if I've got a set of people here, a few things I can do, I can set up a smart plan and I can run them. But let's say that six months ago, you imported a thousand leads. You send them a holiday greeting. You send them some just random kind of hello messages to maintain that top of mind awareness. But a couple hundred are sitting there quiet. You know, they were looking for a home like 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. Calling all of them is not going to work. You don't have that kind of time. We're going to set them up under the right lead type, buyer. And then we're going to set them up into a pipeline stage that might not exist yet. So again, admins would create these, but you could have something called gone cold or something like that, or build a tag or a group for it if you don't have the ability to build pipelines yourself. So nurturing cold, something like that. With leads populating that pipeline, then what you're going to do is set up a really, really simple plan. I'm going to go campaigns. You'll excuse me that I'm clicking through this uh, as fast as I'm talking. Go to standard smart plan. We're just going to set that up with an application condition where those leads meet a specified condition. And I want them to be including current applicable leads because I want everybody to get associated with this. I'm going to go to pipeline. And in this case, mm -hmm. you go to nurturing cold, set it to save, call it gone cold AI trigger. Target lead type is a buyer so that I'm going to have the option that we mentioned earlier, come down to it immediately. And you could have this first, send a couple of emails. Hey, uh, you know, you inquired, but you're not following up. A couple of text messages, maybe a couple of call tasks. 
But eventually we get to this AI assisted action and we say, I want it to continue qualifying the lead. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through the process of reaching out and asking questions. Something we haven't been over yet with AI and with your smart plans is these rely pretty heavily on what kind of contact information you have, right? That means that to have an AI contact your people, you've gotta have their phone number. So we're gonna talk really quickly about conditional questions. Conditional questions also pop up in your smart plans. I'll X that out and show it to you again. Right here, you've got the option for a conditional question. And what it does is it asks, is this person something? We'll have collected that data either on your follow-up form when they register through your website, or sometimes the AI will have already tried to collect that information. If not, it's something you mm -hmm. would need to give us. But in this case, has a phone number in her details. Let's go ahead and say yes. Then I got to get my left clicks going. We'll go to enable AI, set it qualifying the lead. But if they don't, obviously the AI can't do that messaging for me. So we can do something else like an automatic email. And we can set up that email to reach out mm. and perform the ask of trying to track down that phone number. If you don't have their phone number, you're obviously not calling them. You're really going to be left with the ability to email them. So you email them and you can email them information, try to continue engaging them. Or if you had a smart plan from our library that is trying to get that contact information, you could go grab it by choosing to start smart plan and then popping in here. I believe. Uh, Adam, Chris, Tristan, one of you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but in our library, there is a plan that's for getting somebody to give you their phone number, right? Yes, yes. that is correct. Yeah, so we could actually trigger that one and then go about you sending them those emails that says, hey, uh, give me your phone number, let's get in contact, and then circle back around to enabling that AI. A really, really powerful thing that you've got here, which is this conditional question. It allows you to create something like a decision diamond or you know some scenario-based uh, questions and answers. This is, that's, this that's is one job. of the most underutilized features of smart plans. I'm in a lot of systems all the time and I rarely see people using this. Think of this as like a build your own adventure book. When we were kids, we're just doing it with a drip campaign. That's the best, like the best way I can explain it. These are really powerful. It gives you options and keeps your smart plan count to a minimum because you have options within each step instead of having to go down different paths in separate smart plans. It's in all in the same and you can do some incredible things. Please utilize this conditional question if you're not using it now. The other yeah, thing I, I wanted to add here is how we talked about, we're trying to get phone numbers, right? Think about it. You're trying to book appointments. You're trying to make conversation. You're trying to get phone numbers, right? You're asking, you're asking to get, you guys got to give. The key here is give, tell them you can have a free phone call for 10 minutes. No obligation. Just get me on the phone. Let me help you out. You can go on your way. Give them a free PDF, fire tricks and tips. A lot of people don't know what it takes to buy a home and all the steps in between right? Give them something, then ask, because then you shall receive, right? <laughs> so be creative, uh, give them something, give them value, hit their hearts with emotion, whatever it is. Those are the two most important things, emotion and value. Give them that, then ask, because then you'll get that number. Yeah, you can definitely create some value, you know, in one of these plans, if you wanted to, you know, combine these things, you're always able to import from our library. This is a pre-built plan we already have called buyer lead, wrong number. Come in, edit it so that again, you're offering them some value. Hey, I can offer you a consultation on the state of the market. I can send you my buyer's guide that's got up-to-date information, whatever it is that you need to get in there so that they know that you're going to be the best agent for them. And then make that asking them for that number so you can call them Mike. so you can continue to work them. Michael, one of the things that we do right here, I wish uh, Trenton was on, he's my director of tech, but one of the things we do, we use Chime's blog feature and we've been blogging every two days now for the last four months because ChatGPT made it easier for us. I know you guys have a built-in uh, AI as well, but what we're doing is we're figuring what most people are looking for on Google and now when it gets to this section, the value that we're giving is going saying, hey, have you read this? It, it, you might find it interesting 
it's specific to the area you're looking for, or it has to do with buying or selling. So we're writing so much that now we're just leading them right back to our own blog within Chime. Being a market leader within Thousand Oaks. And yeah, man. Providing that information. Information. Yeah, lots of it's, cool ways uh, to create value uh, here and make sure that you're, you know, putting yourself out there so that people know that you're not just not just fishing, that you're actually going to give them something. Actually, that's like, everything I've got. Really, the next I saw a question in here about lead generation. Who's next? Oh, well, we've got. Hold on, I know we're going to be, be Brady. About, yep, social media, right? Let's let's switch over to social media. I love how all these pieces tie in, though. I really like the point about uh, the emotional connection, right? And I think social media is the most powerful way of establishing a social connection, right? It's how you get to humanize yourself. It's how you get to project your values out there into the landscape for your clients and your audience to react to and fall in love with, right? We all love posting pictures of us taking our families to the beach, to Disneyland, right? Those are all great ways of letting people know what you're about, right? And helping you connect in a really authentic and genuine way with the audience that you're trying to influence. Uh, I think social media has taken over. I'm obviously biased. I'm a millennial over here, so I'm glued to social media, but it's only gonna get more and more powerful as, as time continues. And I think that's a really nice segue over to Chime and what we've done to help integrate and syndicate social media into your overall tech stack. Uh, one of the things that Chime has done is opened up what we call a social studio. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen so I can kind of reference what I'm talking about here. Guys, a Brady, social, go ahead. Uh, where where are you at, dude? I know you're not in Phoenix, so I wanted to see where, you, where you're at. I'm in Scottsdale. I'm right here in Phoenix. <laughs> Oh yeah, working from my home office close. today. Oh, nice. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. You're fine. I actually, uh, I split my time sometimes with San Clemente down in South Orange County. That's where I'm from originally. But uh, I ended up chasing my wife out here to uh, to Phoenix a few years ago. So Good I didn't know that about you. I lived on Avenida Rosa for a bit. What? Hmm. Well, there's something to circle back to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, a small world. Man, one degree of separation, right? Um, that's incredible. Wow. Well, let me speak one statistic here just to kind of set the table with, with social media, right? I, I, according to NAR, the number one place to find high quality leads is social media, right? So we need to make it really easy for you to project your listings and your business across the myriad of social media platforms that you lean on all day, every day, and that your clients spend hours and hours a day on, right? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google My Business. Those pieces of social media are all now tied directly into Chime. With our social studio, we give you the ability to put a listing directly onto your social media platforms with one click, right? I can create a social media post here for 1736 Church Street, I can upload my listing video, which is really, really powerful, right? Very engaging. We always want to do videos as much as possible. And then I can share that across all five of my social media platforms with the click of a button. Let me give you a slightly different scenario, right? If you have 10 listings that you get each year and you put each of those listings into the MLS, those listings move through usually at least five different statuses in your MLS, new, pending, price change, close, right? Some variations of mm -hmm. those. That's a lot of different stages for you to update across your social media platforms. With Chime, what we're doing now is offering a Social Studio Pro that will allow you to automatically update your social media profiles as those listings transition from one stage to another. So no longer do you have to manage those 10 listings and update each of their statuses every time they move further down the funnel. Now you can use something like our Social Studio Pro to automatically schedule and automatically update, automatically post those changes across your different social media profiles. That's designed to help save you, right? If you're doing 10 listings, five different statuses, and uh, you've got five different social platforms to manage, 
there's 250 posts for you to tackle right there. You'd be doing that yourself and you'd be managing that manually or maybe having your social media manager do that for you. With Chime and our Social Studio Pro, you can automate that process now. Take your hands off that wheel so you can focus more on building those relationships and creating those emotional connections with your clients, right? And that's what it's really all about. This solution, I think it's really important to point out, is designed to directly replace the need to go outside and spend money on a third-party platform like a Hootsuite, which is like 100 bucks a month or more sometimes. Our Social Studio Pro is only $20 a month. So you're gonna save a bundle of money on what you would be spending with Hootsuite. And it's gonna do the exact same thing, which is automatically updating the status of your listings as they move through the life cycle in your MLS. I don't think Hootsuite's connected to an MLS. Correct, correct. The whole game here, guys, is to help you buy more of your time back, feel like you're really in control of your social media platforms, but without getting bogged down in the minutia of knowing what, different verbiage to put in and which platform to sign in, right? So I just want to really encourage everyone as you're looking at Shime and you're looking at your tech stacks and you're looking at what, what sort of social media efforts you're doing this year, that you can automate a lot of that. And, uh, and Chime can certainly help. So anybody that's interested, we got to get you to come on in and, and take a demo with us and, and learn a little bit more about this. And I feel like that's probably a good segue. You know, I'm over here on the Chime sales team. So I always want to give this wonderful lab code agent community, a really compelling reason to come in and talk to us about these kind of things. So if I could just point out right now for you folks, and we'll probably review this again at the end, but two of the pieces that we've covered today, the AI assistant and the social studio pro, right? Those are typically delivered as add-on extra features for Chime clients. Yeah. Well, what we're giving you guys, the lab code agent community, this, this group that we're a part of and we're blessed to be a part of, is if you guys are willing to come in and get, take a demo with us and get signed up with us, we've got an option here to build in that cost of the $39 standard AI assistant, the $20 per agent per month social studio pro. Those two features will be included at no additional cost for anybody that signs up with Chime here on an annual contract with us. So we've got a oh, really, nice. really exciting promotion and it's an exclusive deal for our lab code agent family. And it's just one more reason to come in here and chat with us, learn more about what we've got going on here and how we can help save you time and make it easier for you to connect with your audience and show them the listings, the videos, the effort that you bring to the table all day, every day. I love this, dude. Thank you. You wrapped that up so nicely, Brady. I think you practiced that, man. Oh, maybe once or twice. <laughs> that, was, that was actually really good. You caught me by surprise. I was like, oh, damn, that was, that was good. You just took my job, Brady. <laughs> I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. Tristan. Was, it's you too know, late, I just, dude. It's I gone. get excited. You know, I'm in, I'm in sales over here. I always got to give folks a reason to come in and talk to us, right? I got to make it special. I, I, you guys are valued. I got I to gotta hammer that home, right? Oh, yeah, you wanna, so good. You want to talk about automated processes. That's Brady right there with his, with his sales <laughs> sales pitch there. <laughs> just that was, right that into was it well done. Like, well done, yeah. Brady. All right, Chris, you're gonna you're gonna take us home, man. This yeah, is what we've been so, waiting for. so shoot. To, to tie all this together, yeah. So I want to talk about the importance of branding. And I'm gonna use a, a funny example here because I think this is awesome. I told someone this story this morning. My nine-year-old son plays music. My nine-year-old son had a recorder at school that they had to practice songs on. And what does he come home and play? Old spice and knows the tagline. <laughs> then what else does he play? The nationwide commercial for insurance. Oh, so wow. I want to tell you, I want to tell you guys how important that is. If you think branding is an important, and I'm going to show you the Verizon sign across the street, why branding is important at the same time, mm. kids on a subliminal level share that innocence more than we do. Cause we're adults, we're old and stale, right? So on that subliminal level, my son remembered the tagline, he remembered the notes, and he was able to play that music. That's why branding is important. Now, I have to tell my son what these companies are as he's like singing these taglines, right? And, you know, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Either way, he knows the taglines because the branding does their job. You guys all know Geico the Gecko, right? Uh, you guys know Coca-Cola, Apple. And you guys can think of characters for all these other brands you like. This is why branding is important. 
if you're doing just Google, you're not doing enough. Social Studio Pro needs to be your best friend first, first and foremost. Like I put in the chat, 250 million plus active users daily on almost every social profile, and that's free. 20 bucks for the, the automated pro version, but it's free for you guys to go out and generate business, right? So branding is important. Now I wanna share why other types of branding are important, like postcards, right? It's called diversifying your branding. So when you think Google is the number one, or you think this is the number one, or that's the number one, mm -hmm. they're not all the number one. Collectively, they're the number one. You guys need to look at anything and everything as a branding opportunity. Postcards themselves are still one of the top three to four ways that we receive branding. I still get pet postcards in the mail. I still get all sorts of things in the mail that are tangible that I can read. Do I disregard most of them? Yeah. But I also disregard most of the ads I scroll by too. I also only click on one ad then when I'm Google searching, right? So a lot of it's disregarded, you know, but you want to think of what that does. And I want to share, I've shared this before and I'm kind of jumping off the geo farm because I want to share the importance of branding here first, real quick, is this is stats that I built for branding. So I want you guys to all look at some of these stats and take these in. These are consumer stats of why branding and using social, using AI, by using all these things are most important. I want to put this in per, into perspective. How many of you guys know Adam's website? How many of you guys know my website? How many of you guys know Tristan's website off the top of your heart or the top of your head? Now, I want to ask all of you in this group, a brand new website you're just visiting, how likely are you going to register on that website if you can't see the right value props or you don't see that brand enough, right? Pretend this, because this is true for all of you, no matter how big you are. 95% of people that make it to your website do not know who you are. They're on the investigation. They're on the inquiry stage of their business of trying to buy, right? Whatever it is, buying a pair of shoes, buying a house. They're in that inquiry stage as they first make it to your website pretend they don't know who you are because they don't. Mm. So you're not going to get them on the phone and say, I want to buy a house with you right away. You need to develop a relationship. They need to see your brand multiple times. Keep reading these bullet points because they make a lot of sense here. It takes five to seven impressions for someone to remember your brand. So the first time they make it, if you get them to register, you're lucky because only 10 to 12% register that first time around of all traffic driven to your website. The more you do postcards, Digital campaigns, social campaigns, you network, you host open houses, you can put your business card at coffee shops. People see your brand five to seven times, and they're more likely to register when they make it to your website the next time they visit, right? Why are postcards so important in this case? They're a keepsake. They're printed. They're tangible. You can't scroll by it. Yeah, you can throw it away. It's a visual element. So make it compelling right? Put compelling information. Put that you have compelling information in your pocket and they need to scan that QR code to receive it, right? Get them to keep that. Get them to build some sort of emotional connection or value to that so that they see your brand multiple times and they decide to use you, right? Not only that, once they get there, use Michael Beatty's smart plans that he discussed to develop even more of rapport right? And customizing the catered experience to that person, they're going to be more likely to use you if you continue to do that and you provide value through drip campaigns, actions, using the AI, re-engaging. This is how you do it holistically all together. And that's why Chime is so powerful because you get all this in one house, right? And so that's what I really wanted to show you guys on the branding side. Now, how do you use postcards in a realistic way, right, for your business. I'll give you this quick example for these postcards. We're able to farm addresses for you. Now, where do you start? Who do you think of that you want to farm? Well, I'm going to give you my example. I love sharing my experience, right? I bought my house 10 years ago when my house here in Phoenix was $100,000. Wow. It's worth five times that easily. Now, I have tons of equity. I could do sideway lateral move. I could move down. I have a ton of equity. So who do you guys want addresses from? Who has the ability in this market to move sideways, move down? People with equity is my point, right? 
So now you're going to farm a list because we're able to pull people with certain loan types, certain age brackets, certain income types, and equity using this homeowner data. All you need is an address and a name. You don't need a phone number and an email. Why are you going to bug somebody? We can provide some of that. You need an address and you need to send them postcards that compel them to move down, move sideways, invest in their retirement because they have all this equity and they can move from Scottsdale where it's now a youthful generation and they have a lot of equity and they could move down the road, buy something cash and pocket $200,000 to travel the globe. Now you put that on a postcard and you send it to those people that have that equity. Are you going to get some people calling you that want to retire early that now have $200,000 in their pocket? Because they bought their house in Scottsdale for $500,000 and it's worth $2 million now. And they only owe $150,000 because they bought it 15 years ago, right? So now they're sitting on a place where $2 million that they owe $150,000. Win-win for everyone, right? They get to retire early. You guys get to uh, sell their home and to buy, help them buy a new home. To start with maybe homeowner data, right? And you can buy that through us. You can get it anywhere you want. You've got addresses in your database already. I'm sure some of you do. Um, so be creative when you think of how do I get certain people and who should I target, right? And then after that, we have multiple options for our direct mail. We have one-time use. You can build these in smart plans if you already have addresses based on tags, pipelines, sources, and you can automate the postcard delivery. I'll give you one example of one you're all missing. It was something I learned when I was really young. I collect birth dates from clients that I work with. I don't do that now. I used to when I worked for myself. The reason is, is I would send personalized birthday messages to them to build extra rapport because it's huge. Mm. You can automate for anyone you run a credit, credit for or anyone you have data for, record their birthday. Anyone and everyone you get on the phone, figure out somehow to get their birthday, put it in the system and start sending them birthday cards. You're going to instantly build rapport if you put that in a smart plan to auto send out birthday cards, right? Holidays, same thing. You can say happy holidays if you don't want to say Merry Christmas. You can say enjoy the holiday season and you can send a picture of your dog or whatever on the postcard with you and your family and that hits the hearts, right? Do it in front of a popular place in your community so they know that you're in their community. They see that now. They see your family. They see your dog. And they just made an emotional connection. I have Anthony Sole's dog. He's a client. Sorry for mentioning your name, Anthony, if you're on here. But I have his golden retriever on my refrigerator. He sent it to me when I put my address in his CRM. Mm. Now, what did I do? Put it on my fridge because he instantly touched my heart. Right. So do the same thing and use smart plans to be creative to, again, shed value, touch hearts. I gave you a few examples there, but we're able to do one time smart plans, recurring uh, letters. So you guys know I am facilitating a rebuild on our direct mail and geographic farming tabs. It's something new that I haven't told anyone publicly yet. Um, we are going to separate homeowner data. So it's much more tangible, which is coming within the next. 30 to 45 days will be separated entirely, a self-purchase a la carte. You guys can be creative with what you do. Be careful because of you know, the no contact rules um, and things like that, but we're gonna separate that. And we are going to expand our direct mail and we're turning it into what's called an internal print center. I'm relabeling okay. it to the print center. And we're gonna start with business cards for you guys in additional to postcards and letters. And business cards, I've asked to have business cards with QR codes on the back, directing them to, by default, all of your all listings page, because that's what people want to see, is listings. So you'll be able to populate your information quickly. You're just starting, get a brand new domain. You can order a box of business cards for your business, have QR codes on the back, again, trackable within the system to see where they came from. Now you have a source that says business card and you have a source that says postcard, you have a source that says Chime Paid Legion, you have a source that says Social Studio. You guys are generating business from all angles. So we're gonna build on this print center. We're gonna start with business cards and we're gonna expand and I can't say anything else because I don't wanna overpromise. We're also trying desperately to add Canada to the delivery there. 
Um, and we're, we're getting pretty close to making this happen for you guys. I've been working really hard on this for the last six to nine months to really make a better option for you guys to have a print center because print is not dead. Digital is alive and well, but print is not dead. There is print everywhere. I saw a billboard for a real estate agent in Sholo, Arizona, as I drove by coming home from Texas two days ago. Gigantic billboard. You know, like I said, Verizon's across the street. Um, we had a billboard across from our old office downstairs that got switched out, had real estate agents on it all the time. So be creative with your investment. Um, I'll give you my real advice when you're coming to, you know, running marketing, start with generating leads. As you close, make sure you record the proper ROI and you re-put that money into future marketing investments because it will compound, start to stack. And eventually you'll have a flow of leads that comes in that you guys will all be feeling good about closing and you're developing this plan that builds your business and your view of your business and you become a market leader. So again, use all those tools, smart plans, AI, digital lead gen, direct mail, huge. Um, and listing promos, good way to start. Make sure you send out CMAs. It's another value prop. Make sure your market reports and market Snapshots are turned on as supplemental information to property alerts. Make sure they're getting all the information. And then the last one I'll ask you guys is why do you think Realtor and Zillow are the most popular websites in the US and Canada? Realtor, CA, Zillow. Why are they the most popular? They provide the most information across the nation for real estate. So if you want to be the most popular in the neighborhood, provide, use these tools provide the most information you can about your neighborhood and be a market leader. Chris, I want you to, I know we're a little over, but I, I thought we'd, we'd cover a little bit on Google PPC, Facebook lead ads. We, can you show the back yeah. end of what it looks like? Cause I, we get that question a lot, but I, yeah. I wanted to cover it for like three to five minutes. Yeah. So one thing we do is we provide with our Google snapshot and our Facebook, right? Is we provide and Bing and LSA, we provide data for you guys to have. Now this is our CRM data that directly integrates with Google AdWords and Facebook. Now, when you guys are on a personal call with me or any of my marketing uh, professionals, I will show you our AdWords, which I know most other providers won't. I know Sync won't show you AdWords. I know a lot of other third parties that I won't mention won't show you AdWords themselves. Um, I will show you that in the clarity of how we're going to set up your campaigns and I'll help you customize so that you have a better understanding when you leave and you know how it works. Now, Google, what Google is doing, it's pay per click. When you pull up a, an ad, I get the question all the time. What do the leads cost? You're not paying for leads. Your website better be really strong because all we're paying for is clicks. We're going to build you custom keywords and drive traffic to your website. You guys need to make sure your website has the most information it can. And I'm glad you asked me this because I'm going to ask something back to everyone on this. Is that your website has value. And if you visit your own website, I want you guys all to visit your website today. Do you have a bio? Do you have a video in your bio? Because that's going to build rapport. Do you have reviews? You better because do you any of you do shopping without looking at peer reviews for anything, let alone a home that's $800,000, right? So you better have reviews. If you go to your site and you're not using our featured area blocks and I can't tell where you're servicing and it, I can see maybe Phoenix and I wanna buy a home in Arcadia, am I gonna go to you versus someone I find information on Arcadia? No, I'm gonna go to the person with, who knows about Arcadia specifically over someone who knows information about Chandler, right? So go to your own website and do an assessment and ask yourself, would I register on my own website if I didn't know who I was? And have your wife do that. Have your friends do that. Do you think my site's good? Would you register here as a real estate website? Because if it's not, you got homework to do, right? You got to go and build value props on your website and be a market leader in your area and tell the story of why I should go visit Thousand Oaks. We're around the corner from Valencia where Magic Mountain is. We're also a 30 minute drive to Malibu. Have you ever been to Santa Monica and seen concerts on Friday nights in the summer at the pier? Right, Tristan? Yeah. 
That's true. I had a girlfriend man. in Malibu at one time. So <laughs> I figured I go, dude, how do you know all this stuff? I was like, yeah. what's going on? I work, I, I work in Southern California. So again, <laughs> be a market leader and share those value props. I don't even live in LA. Right. And so I gave those value props there to, to Tristan as free little nuggets. Um, but do that on your website, put videos on there. Next time you go and you close with somebody, take this little guy right here and film yourself as you hand the keys to that person and get the genuine look on their face as they open the door. That's not replaceable with any paid advertising, right? Film everything that you can with your phone. Next time you do a home showing, show up 20 minutes early instead of 10 minutes late, walk with your phone through the building and tell all the features that you like personally about that house. doesn't matter if someone else doesn't like it. Tell them your personal likes about that house and put those all on your website. Stop building landing pages that aren't live on your website. Do it in your blog posts and put them all on your site. If you think information is good for 10 people, don't give it to 10 people, give it to everybody. So don't hide things on landing pages, put everything on your real website and provide that information, make a center force of information. Um, and again, we can go and build these campaigns and drive people now using Google. And again, 10 to 12% register. The rest of them leave. What do we do with that? We build retargeting, retargeting campaigns that focus on website abandoners. That's what I call them. They are in the inquiry stage. They got to Brady's website and they said, Brady doesn't provide enough value. I'm going to go to Tristan's website. Well, now I'm going to retarget them with other forms of advertising. Five to seven impressions to remember my business. So hopefully next time around, they register through retargeting. Once they get into your database, if they don't have any follow-up, right? They don't have any follow-up once they're in your database and you forget about smart plan. We can build advertising that goes out to just your database and we can use dynamic ads or I can provide value. Either one, if you have videos, I'll use those, but dynamic ads are the best because most people want to look at properties. Again, that's the most visited page on everyone's website on our platform. The, so we can big, build a holistic funnel. The big, I was going to say the big, the big picture, idea here that I want everybody to hopefully take away from this is Shime has shown in a few different ways here with the, the highlighted features that if you want to get more leads and close more leads, there needs to be work on your system to have a proper valuable web presence, a proper valuable social presence. You need to have quality follow-up, consistent follow-up in place using automation peppered in with manual follow-up. And then once you have that in place, now you can run advertising because now you've finally gone grocery shopping and you have food to feed somebody that you just invited to the dinner party. If you don't have all those systems in place, it's not going to work. You're going to have a really, really bad experience. And if you set these systems up using Chime, the way that Chime has designed and do them in the proper order before you start advertising and start working on your brand, you're not going to have a good experience as, as if you do. Just, just. And I want like this is serious stuff here you know like and i'll add to that adam you know you know like it if you guys are running lead gen with me you guys are running lead gen with sync wilopo boomtown i get this all the time lead quality sucks ask yourself next time because we're all doing very similar things we're driving mm -hmm. traffic to your website ask yourself does your website sell your business because mm -hmm. you need to take some personal ownership when you say that lead quality sucks does your website suck, right? And I don't mean to say it like that to you guys, but does your website feel compelling? And is it able to win the hearts and minds? Is it able to share value for your neighborhood? And then on top of that, are you making more than one phone call? Are you just texting people? Because if you are, you better up your game. It takes 12 to 15 contact attempts within the first eight days of registration, if not the first three minutes for you to make them answer the phone because there's no other way that you can guarantee leads are gonna register. And I want you guys all to hear this from me personally, I'll combat this. When someone guarantees lead flow to you guys, they're full of the, the brown stuff. Because out of all of us in this webinar, the, say there's 800 people that signed up, I'm gonna ask you guys all this. So you guys get a realistic expectation of what lead gen is. 800 of you guys get my advertisement for my website. 
Can I guarantee that even one of you registers? Can I guarantee that? That user action of you putting in your real phone number, real email, and being a real person, you are a real person. People lie about it all the time. They need to see the right information, right? But can I guarantee that? So the next time I hear someone come at me after they're running lead gen saying, the lead qualities are terrible and I was promised this many leads, Nah, uh Your website better up its game. You guys take some personal ownership into your follow-up, into your online presence, into what you're doing, and you will increase the likelihood of each one of us out of 800 registering with you to find a business with you. So remember that, take that ownership and build up your game. We have all the tools within our system for you to do that. That's the huge best part of Chime is I'm a firm believer in this because I worked in sales for many, many years and I never had a system that would do all this in one house for me. That's true. So think about That's it. True, man. Very true. Good point on that. Uh, Jake, put up the link to Chime. Guys, if you want to put the best way to get a hold of you, if there are any questions, I don't know if you have a Chime email or a Chime dedicated phone number. I know we can get a hold of anyone on Chime in the chat inside of uh, the back end of the CRM. So I know that that's there. And then Adam, if you want to put up your link, I know people need setup on on Chime here and there. So I will so put up everyone... my, both my links here. I got one, um, uh, one that has my setup services and one that is my Calendly that people can go to. So it's chimesetup.com, or if you just want to figure out how I can help, uh, I do consultations, I do trainings, I do just, hey, listen here, here's what you need to do kind of thing. I got free discovery calls, I've got paid training stuff, that's uh, chimeguy.com. So either, either one of those to get a hold of me. I love it, man. And um, let me, I know I had a, a couple of other questions about processes and systems. I think it comes down to you just making sure, like Chris was saying, you you've also you also have to take some responsibility for reaching out to these people, right? And that's that's a big that's a big part of it. And so I do talk about it. And guys, I don't know if you know, but I bring up chime a whole bunch on my book. See, so chime, 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 all the way down. And um, I have the processes down. So you guys. Jump in. Here's here's one of the processes, but just follow up, lead follow up, and I use Chime as my main example. So, if you guys have a chance, jump on in, check it out, and do yourself a favor. If you're not already with Chime, just grab it. They have all the pieces. I can't do a better job than Brady. Sorry, Brady, you win. <laughs> <laughs> you're too that? kind, Tristan. You're too Dude, kind. It was, it was really good. It was really good. All I can say is I put up a link to the book. That's it. That's all. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Adam, thanks. Brady, Chris, thanks Michael. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you, thank you guys.